How's it going Guardians? Shifty here and today I'm back with another solo run of the Grandmaster Exodus Crash Nightfall. In this one I'm going to be running a Titan and instead of Gallarhorn I'm going to be using Deathbringer. Now before I get into the rest of my loadout, if you end up enjoying the video, make sure to hit that like button and if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe as well. Alright so for this run I went with Bottom Tree Sunbreaker and for my exotic I'm using Lion Rampant. Next up, for my weapons, I have the Seven Seraph Carbine for Barrier Champions. I have the Wolf Tone Draw Bow for Overload Champions. And as I mentioned already, in my heavy slot, I have Deathbringer. And lastly, for my armor mods, I'm just going to quickly show you each piece of armor. And if you need to see anything in more detail, just pause the video. Alright and that is it for my loadout here. I will be including live commentary with this one and I will have timestamps if you want to skip to a particular part of the strike. Anyway, let's jump right into it. Alright so this run should be pretty similar to my Warlock run. The key difference is going to be that I'm using Deathbringer instead of Gallarhorn. That's going to make certain parts more challenging like killing champions and taking out pike dregs. However, it's going to make the boss fight a little bit easier, especially to take out the enemies beneath the cheese spot. So in that case, I didn't even need to use Deathbringer. I was able to get that drag off that pike with just two arrows. And this is a problem with Deathbringer and those pike dregs. Alright, I'm going to try to get that pike and the vandal way over there. Well, I was able to get the Vandal, but not the Pike. And there it is. So I didn't get many of the enemies that I wanted to. I was hoping to get the resilient drag and that pipe. One lone shank up there. I'm going to take out this red bar vandal. And almost had the resilient drag as well.
Did I miss an arc pulse? No. Narrow down a location. Let's go. Alright, so right when I get up here, I'm gonna toss a grenade and then Deathbringer. So it's time to go for this overload. So I will be shooting Deathbringer shots directly at it. The reason for this is it's going to prevent it from healing. It allows me enough time to get swapped back to my bow in order to get another overload shot on the champion and prevent it from healing. If you try to go for bonus damage on the travel time for the orbs, oftentimes an orb will still be falling by the time you need to switch back to your bow. In that case, the champion is going to heal and basically negate any of the bonus damage you would have done. I do have a grenade, so I'm going to apply Withering Heat there. I'm going to grab the small brick. And remember that big brick is there. You can come back and grab that in a little bit. Of course, my grenade hit the stairs in a strange way, so I couldn't apply withering heat there. That went way too far. I'm just going to finish this one off with my bow. Quickly head back here to grab that heavy ammo brick. And right as I approach this plate here, I'm going to go ahead and super. I need to get that other champion to stop shooting at me. Alright, one champion is down. Ah, 
Obviously, you can still see there's another one. I'm going to heal before I try to go for that one again. If I could hit my arrow, that'd be great. That was a close one. It is almost impossible to get up here to actually stun it. And I want to look for any more invisible marauders that may be hiding out here. Kind of one stuck in that spawn location over there. So during this plate phase, you can always back off the plate just like I did and fight off the wave of adds. And then when they're all gone, you can resume capturing the plate. It'd be nice to get a few more heavy ammo drops here. Alright, at 50% we're going to get two barrier champions and a bunch of arc shanks. After one barrier champion is defeated, three overload champions are going to spawn as well as several more adds. So I'm going to go ahead and try to take out one of these barrier champions right away. Right, one barrier champion is down, so I am going to backtrack here. Like I said, there's going to be three overload champions. And I'm going to actually head all the way back here, because the champion should come down here eventually. And I kind of want to isolate one of them at a time. Sometimes they interweave with one another, but you just kind of have to try and deal with it as best as you can. Like this.
And that completely failed. That grenade, anyway. I'm just gonna have to give up on that back champion and go for this front one. I can try to diamond drum both simultaneously like this, but it is a bit risky. Now I have a third one in the mix. So I'm going to go for one at a time. I've wasted so much ammo here already. They're all kind of just piled right here, which makes it extremely difficult. So I'm going to focus on just this one. The others can teleport around as they please. Alright, one of them is down. Alright, the second one is down. And now I have to be very careful with this third one. There it is. And all three champions are finally down. That was a little bit rough, but we got the job done. Now I'm going to go for the second barrier champion. And now I have no more heavy ammo left, so I'm going to have to rely on my other weapons. It is finishable, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Finally resume capturing the plate after that messy overload situation.
think that should be it for this wave. And for this one, we're going to have a heavy shank. But there is going to be no overload champion here. And for the last wave, we will have another Overload Champion, but we're also going to have two Heavy Shanks. Alright, for these Heavy Shanks, I'm going to go ahead and Super. Alright, now I can finish capturing and then we can move on to the next area. So unfortunately, this is taking a little bit longer than my Warlock run. What that kind of tells me is that Deathbringer isn't quite as good as Gallarhorn for the entire strike. Although I do think Deathbringer is better for the boss fight. Alright, if you've seen any of my other videos, you know I like to head off to the right here and fight the uh, walker tank from this right hand side. Go ahead and use a few heavy shots here. Since I can't really hit the crit spot from this angle, I'm going to go ahead and fight some of these heavy shanks. Am 
might get some heavy ammo off of them. That's kind of why I'm doing it. No heavy ammo this time. This back leg here should be pretty weak. I was going to say. Shouldn't be too much longer here. And there it is. I did get a little bit of heavy ammo in the process there. I am just a master at throwing grenades lately. That was a little too far. That was a little bit better. Not by much. I'm not going to use any more heavy ammo here. I'm just going to finish it off with my bow, I think. We have one orange bar vandal here. And we're basically to the boss room. So before I get into the cheese spot, I'm going to hop down here, take out all but one of these overcharged shanks. Then I'm going to go ahead and hop up here and up to the very top, hopefully. There we 
we go. And then back to the entrance. Want to kind of scoot up this left hand side. And hop right up here. Then on to this. And over here. And I'm going to kind of crouch walk over to this edge. And this is where we're going to fight the boss from. If you saw my warlock run, this should look familiar to you. You don't want to be too far back, otherwise you could slip off the back. So just make sure you're not too far back. And then you can take out the final shank. When you do, the boss should spawn. And right off the bat here, I'm going to go ahead and super. So you can notice a ton of enemies that are spawning. Those enemies all need to be defeated in order to progress this boss fight. However, those enemies are mostly going to end up beneath this platform that I'm on. So that's where Deathbringer comes in handy. I'll be able to shoot Deathbringer and let the Seekers find all of those enemies for me. You can see every once in a while the boss does get a little bit of a hit on me up here. So just be aware of that. I'm trying not to use any of my heavy ammo on the boss right now because I do need it for those enemies that are below me. Once the boss is below two-thirds health, it's going to disappear, and then I'm free to go for those enemies. So, what I'm going to do is shoot a Deathbringer shot like that, and let the Seekers do the work for the most part. You can also shoot a shot over here like this. And once all of the other overcharged shanks disappear, you know you're moving on to the next boss damage phase. And so the boss will come back out. You're going to get some more enemies spawning here again. Well, that was a terrible grenade. I'm very bad at throwing grenades this time around. And there goes a the heavy ammo brick. That barrier champion is off to my left there. I'm going to try to make the boss go away before I try to fight any sort of champions. See if I can get a heavy ammo drop off of any of these shanks. So I'm going to go ahead and super the boss again.
Like I said, I am trying to get some heavy ammo. Alright, so... I'm just going to try to select one of the champions and go for the champion. One of them should be about ready to barrier. There it is. So with auto-loading holster, I can get about four bow shots off before I have to swap back and be ready for the barrier. If you don't have auto-loading holster on your auto rifle, you're of course going to have to swap back your auto rifle and manually reload it. A lot sooner than I do. If I had a bunch of spare heavy ammo lying around, I would definitely be using that on these champions, but I don't. One champion down. Unfortunately, I'll let it heal there. And that champion is down, and now I have to clear out the enemies beneath me. So, of course, Deathbringer shot like that. And like that. I heard all the shanks get exploded. Which means the boss is coming back. However, during this phase, the boss is in a melee stance. That means I'm not going to be able to fight it from up here. So I am going to want to take out all the enemies and then I can fight the boss again. There are a bunch of invisible marauders that should end up beneath me. I'm going to go ahead and use Deathbringer on those. I'm going to clear these overcharged shanks out and then I'm going to head down and fight the boss in its melee stage. I'm going to sit on these crates and try to avoid its melee attacks. I've had basically no heavy ammo drops this entire time, which has been unfortunate. Heavy ammo drops from those overcharged shanks. There's a heavy ammo brick. So 
So I think I hit the boss with that one. Yep, I'm hitting the boss with a couple of them now. I'm not getting any more Marauders, so I'm going to actually head down now. And the boss is going to kind of sit here and do this. And I'm going to attack it until it disappears again and wait for it to come back to the spot. Should disappear at any moment now. There it goes. Going to reappear somewhere. And now I'm going to go ahead and super. And that will finish off Thavix. Anyway, that was a solo completion of the Grandmaster Exodus Crash Nightfall on a Titan. I hope that you enjoyed the video, and if you did, remember to like and subscribe. I just want to thank you for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.